So, when we studied about the TCP IP protocol suit in the last class about the subnetting and all. Uh, next to that, the next layer that in the TCP IP protocol suit is the network layer, which is equivalent to your, which is called the IP layer and equivalent to the network layer in the OSI model. We have seen the OSI layer and then uh, OSI model and the network layer in the OSI model. What is the job with the network layer in the OSI model is the routing. So, what we did, uh, what we studied in that, the different routing protocols and their services. Because OSI is a service oriented protocol, we focus on the different protocols and the routing algorithms and how they work and all. Coming to the TCP IP counterpart, this is a protocol oriented model. So, we have to study the details of the protocol and we must understand how a protocol works. The corresponding protocol for the IP layer or the network layer in the TCP IP model is called the internet protocol or the IP. And the packet, when we say about a packet in the OSI model, the packet when comes to the TCP IP, we say that is a datagram. The reason as we have already discussed in one class that uh, the difference between OSI and the TCP IP is that in the network layer, when OSI supports both connection less and connection oriented kind of service, the TCP IP model, it supports only the connection less service. That is the virtual circuit, I mean the packet switching concept. So, the data unit that is used in the IP or the TCP IP is usually called the datagram. So, whenever I am saying the datagram, it is same as your packet in the OSI model. Now, as we know the packet or the data comes from the top layer that is application layer and it travels all the layer from the application till the file layer, the physical layer and in every layer it goes on adding the headers and the other informations and finally, it becomes a big frame and that frame is now communicated over the physical channel. So, when it comes to the network layer also, the data that comes from the upper layer, maybe let us consider the transport layer of the net, up, uh, I mean the upper layer of the network layer that is a transport layer. So, it contains the data from the transport layer and in the IP layer, it adds its own header. So, the complete thing becomes now a datagram. So, if you say the datagram consists of the header information and the data that comes from the upper layer. So, if I divide this, one is a header part and another is the data part. And this header is, the length of the header is a 20 to 60 byte length. The objective of mentioning this is, we must know how a datagram or how the header informations are encapsulated into the datagram, so that the receiver accepts the datagram and interprets the each of these fields of this header in the correct format and delivers the packet to the upper layer that means the transport layer. So, first the considering the data, this is the one that comes from the top layer. So, we have nothing to do at this stage for the data, but coming to the header part of the datagram which is a 20 to 60 byte length, we can study some of the major fields of this header and how those fields signify the details about the packet or the datagram in the TCP IP. So, the different fields are the format you can say the field format of the IP datagram is like this. It is divided into 4 byte words, multiple 4 byte words out of which 20 bytes are compulsory if, if each are 4 bytes. If each word or 4 bytes length, then 20 bytes are compulsory and the rest 40 bytes are called the options field. So, they are not mandatory for the datagram to be entered. And about this 20 bytes, it is a mandatory field, how the fields are divided that we will see. The first 4 byte or the first word is divided into 4 sections having 4 bit each of first two fields, 8 bit the third field and the 16 bit for the fourth field. The first 4 bit field 
is a version field. I will just write it now and I will go for the details of all this letter. HLAN, then the service type, then you have a total length field. Coming to the version field, this says what version of IP is now you are using. I mean the current datagram supports. Usually we go for the IP version 4 or you go for the IP version 6. The objective is that if a router supports one version of the IP and a datagram comes for another version, then this router instead of processing it or interpreting in, in a wrong way, it simply discards the packet or drops the packet. That means the version of the packet that is coming to a particular router who does not support the version should not accept it for forwarding. That is what is the objective. So, your version field will say what version of the what version of the field I mean the datagram will be supporting this datagram I mean this packet. The next field is the HLAN field or the header length field. The HLAN or the header length. This header length specifies what is the size of your header field in the whole of the <coughs> datagram whether it is 20 or any value among 20 to 60. So, to have that this HLAN field it decides the length of the header in terms of 4 bytes words. That means how many words are occupied for this length header field. So, if it is 20 then definitely the HLAN is equal to your 101 and if all 60 bytes if all 60 bytes are occupied by the datagram then definitely your HLAN will be. So, any value between 5 to 15 is for the length of the header field in terms of in terms of the 16 byte words. Then you have another field called the service type the S type field. This is a as we have seen this is a 8 bit field out of which first 3 bit are defined as the precedence bit or the priority bit. That means, a datagram can have a priority level of 0 to 7 that decides the priority of the datagram and this is usually generated by the source who generates the packet. So, when the packet is generated the source identifies what is the priority of the packet. The reason is as we know there are several other issues when the packet there is a chance that the packet may get dropped during its journey. So, to have the protection of either dropped or not to be dropped it identifies the priority of the datagram. So, if it is a high priority datagram should not be dropped at if there is any congestion it has to be through. If it is a low priority datagram it may be dropped whenever there is a congestion. That is what is the objective of giving the precedence. So, first 3 fields is your precedence field or the priority field for the datagram. Then the next to that you have 4 other fields which are very important in this case they decide what kind of service the datagram can support. Usually what are the different what is the objective of an IP layer routing right. So, when the routing is the objective what could be the parameters measuring parameters by now you must have uh, known all those things when you are working on the routing algorithms all those things. When a packet has to be delivered what is the first and foremost thing you must take into consideration. How long does it take to travel the delay right. So, delay is one of the parameter or the service that has to be supported by the any routing algorithm. Another is how many packets are sent I mean originated by the source and how many are delivered. So, it decides how many has been dropped on the way and how many has been accepted or delivered that decides the throughput of your network. So, the another parameter is throughput and above all this any routing you must expect it should be reliable routing right. So, reliability another parameter to decide the efficiency of your network and finally, is the cost associated with the routing of the packet from one source to the other destination. So, these 4 values D, T, R, C they decide what are the services to be offered or to be supported by this datagram. When you talk about the delay it has to be minimized or maximized? It has to be minimized. 
when throughput is considered it has to be maximized reliability maximized cost minimized so these are the optimum values to be considered whenever you could take the routing into consideration so depending on that any of this four field can be set to one at any point of time if you think or if the source thinks that my my uh, datagram that i'm generating should either go for a high reliable datagram or should go for a minimum cost one or should go for a low delay or should go for a high throughput one so depending on that this one of this field will be set to zero if non is set to uh, will be set to one if non is set to one that means if all zeros it's a regular datagram and any of the intermediate router can take any decision in between but if the source identifies a particular service type that has to be taken care of when it visits multiple hops on the way to its destination so that's what is your service type dtrc the delay throughput reliability and the cost of the datagram and next another field is it is usually reserved or you can say unused till now reserved for future use something that's what is your service type field coming to the next way next type of the next field that is the total length field the total length field decides what is the length of the total datagram this is used to decide the length of the data if you want if you find the actual length of the data in a datagram then what you can do is equal to the total length t ln minus the h ln will give you the length of the data field or the data length d length field so your total data length i mean the total length of the datagram minus the h ln field whether it's 20 bytes or 60 bytes or 40 bytes or 30 bytes any byte will decide what is the actual data encapsulated into the datagram so this is what is the field that identifies the amount of data encapsulated in the datagram that is the total length field coming to the next field in the header format we have this word is divided into two parts one is the identification and another is another two parts again divided into two parts that is one is the flag field another is the fragmentation offset fragmentation offset when the identification field is a 16 bit field or 2 byte field the flag is a 3 bit field and the fragmentation offset is a 13 bit field we'll see about the whole of the word in the uh, latter part of this um, class so this part let's skip this uh, this is for a special use the identification flag and the fragmentation offset is used for a special purpose during the travel of the datagram from the source to destination that we'll see in the next part so before that we'll have another part i mean the next word that comes to the again having three parts one is the the time to leave part the time to leave part then another is a protocol field and there is a header checksum when the time to leave is 8 bit the protocol is again 8 bit and the header checksum obviously will be 16 bit now this three fields are very quite known to us the time to leave field ttl field you know in case of your link state algorithm in case of a flooding algorithm we have seen if there is a field called age or a time to leave this field is similar to that that means when a datagram is created by the source it stamps a value to this datagram saying that this datagram can be alive for 100 visiting nodes or 1000 visiting nodes so every time it goes to a hop or a router or any intermediate node the the ttl is decremented by one and when this is decremented by one and add, and the value comes to zero the packet is automatically dropped so there is a certain life period or time period for the life of the life of the datagram so this field signifies that the time to leave field and the next field is the protocol field what this protocol field says we have the upper layer in the sender side we have the transport layer which is the upper layer of your ip and at the receiver side again you have a transport layer which is again the upper layer in the ip so what we know that every lower layer provides a service to the upper layer and the upper layer uses the service of the lower layer so when the ip or the datagram of this sender side 
gets the packet or the data from the transport layer, then encapsulates its own data, I mean own header and forms the datagram here. And this datagram travels all the way from the source to the destination and comes to the IP. Again, this has to be delivered to its destination, destination upper layer. So, what kind of protocol is supported by these upper layers will be decided in the protocol failure because you know the upper layer is transport layer. So, what are the different protocols in the upper layer? Usually, you know that the UDP and the TCP that means again connectionless or connection oriented kind of service. So, that always matters how a service is provided whether it is a connectionless service to be provided or it is a connection oriented service to be provided and that will be decided in the protocol field in the protocol field of the this datagram. So, this says the dest what is the upper layer protocol of the destination device or this UDP or the TCP to be supported by the datagram that will be received by the IP of the destination that is what is the protocol field of the header datagram. Then coming to the next field of this header part of this datagram we have another 4 byte word this signifies the only one field that is the source IP address. This is very very significant because whenever a datagram is generated the source or the origin stamps its IP address this is the source and has to be delivered to a host that is the ultimate IP or destination IP address. It may visit in between, but the final destination is mentioned here in the destination <coughs> IP address. So, if it, in, it visits 100 nodes in between they can have they can they may be the intermediate receivers, but the final receiver or the final destination is this one who will receive the packet or the datagram at the end and next is your options field as we decide this is a not mandatory some of the fields are very necessary some are not. So, we are not going to cover the options field, but these 5 words having the different fields are very very important in case of your IP datagram. So, now we will go for the second word that we skipped that is identification and the flag and the fragmentation field what is the significance of that field we will see now. So, I let me draw the again this word here the word having the 16 bit identification field coming to that next to that is a 3 bit flag field and then you have the fragmentation of offset field which is again the 13 bit field. What is the objective or why you have such a field in this whole story? Let us assume that your sender is here your receiver is here and you have a router in between there can be multiple routers in between. Now, when the datagram comes let us say D1 is the datagram comes from the upper layer then it is again converted into the the datagram is again encapsulated into a frame right. So, the lower layer at the center side it is converted now to a frame and then from the frame with all the 0 1 raw bit it goes to the router and router has its again its own DLL. Now, this DLL what it does decapsulates the datagram from its header and the trailer right. You have the header you have the trailer here and here is your actual D1 that traveled all the way from this to this right. So, now this D1 after decapsulated it goes to the IP layer. So, now D1 comes here to the router. Now, this datagram has to what is the job of the router? It will store the data that it receives, it will find an optimal path and it will forward the datagram into that path that is what is the job it does not do anything else. So, storing and forwarding is the job of your router. Now, this router what it will do it will check for what are the outgoing path for this router and it finds that this datagram should follow this path to reach to the receiver. Correct. So, what it does again it has its own layer now again this D1 has to be transmitted. So, it goes to the next layer again the DLL again, so again the frames are generated and now transmitted in this path very simple, but the thing is that the router can be connected to multiple types of networks. Let us say your input is an 802.3 network. Ethernet network. 
let us say your outgoing path is a 802.5 network, a token ring network. So, the format that will be used by this will be definitely different from the format that will be used by this network. Your router can have a input different network than the outgoing path. Now, it is the job of the router to decapsulate the data from this format and again encapsulate it into the 802.5 format and send it in the path in that format and to the receiver. This is the reason why your router has a bigger responsibility than any other part of the network. At this point what it checks? What happens if both are different networks? If 802.2 or 3 or 4 or 5 what is the difference? Every network because they are the DLL or the data link layer protocols or the uh, standards, every network has got its physical size, physical data size as we discussed sometime in the last class probably. That means any physical network can carry a certain amount of data called the maximum transfer unit or the MTU. And this MTU, we know that DLL has its own format, right? HDLC protocol, the data link header format. What it has? It has its own header information, own teller information. This is header and the teller information. Beyond that, it has a field which will actually encapsulate the datagram here. That defines what size of data it can encapsulate into it so that it can transfer into the physical channel till the receiver. If 802.3 is of size of 1 MB, it may happen that the 802.5 is a 0.5 MB. Now, the datagram that comes with 1 MB size, can it be encapsulated into a frame which carries only 0.5 MB? It is not possible. So, in that case, what has to be done? Now, it is the role of the router to fragment this datagram, this 1 MB datagram into two parts of 0.5 MB, 0.5 MB each. So, now your D1 is divided into D11 and D12, two packets, two datagrams from the same source, visited the same router, but divided into two separate datagrams having D11 and D12. And now, this D11 and D12 can be encapsulated into the 802.5 format having the size of its MTU. So, one is D11 and another is D12. Now, they can easily pass through this 802.5 network, it is come to the it comes to the receiver and now what the receiver will check? The receiver will do the reassembling of this D11 and D12 into a single datagram that is D1. So, whenever a datagram is generated in the source, it is always possible that any intermediate node or any intermediate router can fragment it into smaller chunks till it reaches the final destination. But none of the intermediate nodes can reassemble them, they can only make the fragmentation but the final reassembly has to be done at the destination side or the final receiver whose address was mentioned in the datagram as the destination IP address. Rest all the routers only can fragment it and again make their own format, send it in the outgoing path to reach to the destination. So, this is the story for your total traveling of the datagram from the source to the destination. In this story, how the identification, the flag field and the fragmentation offset field they take the role, we will see now. As we saw the identification field, this is very common. Any datagram that is generated by a source will have its own ID. Like NITR, NITRKL.ac.in means any XYZ having this ID belongs to this institute. This is the ID you have been given. Similarly, any, any datagram that is generated with this source will have an ID, may it be fragmented into million parts, but they must carry the same ID indicating that they are the datagrams of this source. So, your ID field will carry an unique ID generated by the source along with its IP address. If this combination is there, that means 
the datagram whoever has fragmented does not matter, but this two field will be copied into this automatically they belong to the same source and will be considered by the receiver as the datagram of the source S. So, simply whenever a packet is fragmented the person or the node who fragments it copies the ID field of the original datagram into the fragmented datagrams, it is simply copied down that is what is the job of your ID, it is a 16 bit field. Next to that you have a 3 bit field as we saw 3 bit field forget the first is not used. There are two fields, one is a D field, one is a M field. What is the specification of these two fields? Let us say the datagram comes to a router and the source says that whatever will be the MTU does not matter, whatever may be the case, my datagram should not be fragmented on the way. If the MTU is smaller size, simply drop it, do not fragment it. That is the instruction from the source when it comes, when it is generated. To indicate that if the D field is set to 1 that means do not fragment. For any reason the datagram cannot be fragmented by any intermediate node. If it is less size or if it is not possible by the router to pass it simply it will drop the packet. But if it is set to 0 it says that you can fragment it. Whenever required you can fragment the datagram. So, that is again the choice of the router depending on the size you can fragment that is what is the role of your D field. Coming to the next field the M field if M is set to 1 it indicates that more fragments exist I am not the last fragment. More fragments exist other than me and I am not the last fragment so whenever it is required when the reassembly takes place because the reassembling takes place still the last fragment. So, to identify the last fragment m should be equal to 0 that means I am the last fragment. So, when this fragment arrives at the receiver with m is equal to 0 the re, uh, receiver understands that now I should start reassembling because I have received all the fragments starting from m equal to 1 and the, all those offset field along and finally m is 0 the last fragment has come. So, now I can reassemble all the fragments to get the original datagram. This I am sorry? Fragmentation is done in DLL. No, fragmentation is done at the datagram side, keeping in mind the size of your DLL. What is the size of that DLL will support? Depending on that, the router will divide, fragment it. Because of uh, every layer knows, I mean, they, they have their own protocol stack. So, this routing layer understands or knows what is the size of my DLL, what is the size of my frame, so that a frame can be generated. Accordingly, it fragments the datagram. So, this is what is your three fields the unused field you can say and the D field and the M field. And next is the very important field the fragmentation offset field a 13 bit field. When you know the original datagram has been fragmented into multiple fragments what is the distance of a fragment from its original address that is the offset that decides the fragmentation offset at what length I am my position is or the position of a particular fragment with respect to the source or the origin of the datagram that is what is the fragmentation offset. Now, let us say you have a datagram let us say we are, will talk about an example you have a datagram of 4000 byte size that comes to a router and the router is connected to a network whose MTU is 1400 bytes, whose MTU is 1400 bytes. So, now what the router will decide? 4000 maximum size is 1400. So, it can have three fragments D1, D11, let us say the datagram is D1 of size 1400, D12 of size 1400, how many, how much space is gone? I mean the size has been occupied 2800. Then another is D13, but it should be the size 1200. So, now this is the strategy that the router has to make three fragments 1400, 1400 and 1200 of the datagram to be 
pass through a network whose MTU is 1400 size, right? So, how this is being done and how the fragmentation offset is decided and how the, how the reassembly is done. 4000, so you have the datagram 0, 1, 2 up to 3999, right? This is the actual D1 we are talking about. This is divided into one fragment. The first fragment is of size again 0, 1, 2 up to 1399, right? This is 1399. The second fragment will be starts with the address 1400, 1401 till it comes to 2799, right? And uh, this is D11, this is D12, this is D13. And the third fragment that starts with the address 2800 till 3999 and this is D13. Now, you have three fragments generated from the datagram D1. What is the offset address will be here? The offset address is for the first one will be the starting address that is a 00, 0 by 8 which is equal to 0. So, your offset address is 0. This is the beginning of your datagram, the first datagram or the first fragment of the datagram. When it comes to the next one, what is the offset of this is the length of the previous <coughs> fragment divided by 8. What is the length of the previous uh, fragment is 1400. Here the offset is the length of the previous datagram is 1400 divided by 8 which is equal to how much? 175. So, here the offset is 175. Coming to the next one, here the offset is the addition of the length of all the previous fragments divided by 8 that is equal to 1400 plus 1400 by 8 which is equal to probably 350. That means your first D11, the first fragment remains with an offset of 0, the second one remains with an offset of 175 and the third one remains with an offset of 350. So, now all three, all three fragments are encapsulated into the frame 1, frame 2 and frame 3, right? Now, it travels all the way from the source to the destination, it comes to the destination now. When the first frame comes to the receiver, what the receiver does? The DLL, DLL of the receiver what it does? It decapsulates, decaps the F1 and sends to the upper layer. So, what arrives here is D11. The offset is noticed or the marked by the receiver, the offset is 0. That means this is the first fragment, right? Then the next frame that comes here is F2. This is again decapsulated, sent to the next again the upper layer. This is D12 actually and the offset is marked as 175. What was the length of this one? 1, 4, 0, 0. So, next of uh, expected offset is 175 and it has come. So, receiver understands now this is my second, second fragment. Coming to the next one, the F3 comes the similar way and your D13 comes here with offset 350, the third one. But now, how the receiver understands that this is my last fragment? It checks for the field. M. It finds that the M field says it is equal to 0. So, when the fragment offset is checked as 350 and M field is checked as 0, that means this is the last fragment to be expected and now the receiver starts joining all the fields of 1400, 1400 and the 1200 to get a 4000 byte data gram. This is how a packet is generated from the source travels through multiple hops or multiple routers you can say who may fragment, who may not fragment, who may drop, who may not drop and finally it comes to the receiver, the receiver finally accepts all these datagrams then arranges them into the right order to deliver to the upper layer that is the transport layer. Now, let us say, let us say there is a condition here in this uh, here. Let us say this second field, I mean this one, 
this passes because this is a packet switching it can travel any path let us say it passes through another router R2 who is connected to another network let us say 802.4 whose MTU is still smaller let us say MTU is 500 possible. So, now again what this router does it fragments the this field into D121, D122 and D123 of size 500, 500 then 400 yeah 400. So, you decide again the what will be the offset for all 3, what will be the offset for all 3? First one will be offset as the previous one 175 right, second one will be 175 plus 500 by 8 sorry this one 500 by 8 175 plus this value the length of the datagram then again the next one will be 175 plus 500 by 8 whatever you got plus 500 by 8. So, this is how the this is how the offsets or fragmentation offsets are calculated and they are again recalculated by the by the receiver to reassemble them into the final datagram ok. So, this is what is the story of journey for the datagram that you receive all the time in your uh, laptop or your mail somewhere, but you never understand how much pain it takes to reach to you right.